My name's AJ Jane, I'm an interventional cardiologist and I consult at the London Independent Hospital. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, holes in the heart, uh, what they are, how uh, they present in terms of symptoms and the sort of treatments that we can offer for them. I'll separate holes into the heart into two separate entities. The first thing I'll talk about is uh, the patent foramen ovale. Now, patent foramen ovale, or PFO as I'll call it, is a flap-like passageway between the upper chambers of the heart, which is present in all of us and is essential for normal development and when we're developing as fetuses in the womb. Now, in most people, that uh, flap-like connection between the upper chambers will close within the first year or so of life. But in a small proportion, about one in five people, that flap-like opening stays patent, and that's what we call a patent for Armin ovale. The presence of a PFO uh, may be asymptomatic in many patients and often has no clinical significance. However, there is an association between the presence of a PFO and migraine headache and also stroke in young adults. And it's in these patients who may have a PFO found on other screening tests that there may be some role for closure of the PFO using various techniques, including a device that can be placed across the flap-like hole to prevent uh, passage of blood clots through it. In conjunction with our colleagues in neurology, uh, we look at patients who may have had uh, unexplained stroke or, or other symptoms and then we may screen them for PFO, and if a PFO is present and we think it appropriate, we may go ahead and recommend a device closure. Preliminary screening tests would include an ECG to look at uh, the heart's rhythm, and also an echocardiogram, specifically using a contrast agent or bubbles to see whether or not we can force the abnormal connection between the right and left heart to reveal itself during the scan. If a PFO is present, then further investigations, such as a transesophageal echocardiogram, may be required to look at the defect in more detail and ascertain its suitability for closure. The procedures themselves are relatively straightforward. They're normally performed uh, with a single night stay under a general anaesthetic. The procedures are performed via the groin as a minimally invasive procedure such that there's no uh, need for open heart surgery. We'd expect patients to make a rapid recovery from the procedure and we can normally discharge them on the first day following their intervention. They're continued on drug treatment to reduce the risk of blood clots forming and with follow-up over two and three months time, if we see evidence that the PFO has closed, we can expect them to lead a completely normal life thereafter. The second type of hole in the heart that I'll speak about is the atrial septal defect. These are a congenital heart problem, uh, which means that patients are born with these small holes in the heart and many patients have these diagnosed at a young age when they're either um, closed uh, in childhood, or if very small, are left and observed because they may close of their own accord. In some patients uh, who have atrial septal defect, they may present with symptoms in adulthood. Atrial septal defect can cause problems such as um, an elevation in the blood pressure in the lungs, heart rhythm irregularity, and even heart failure. And in patients who these have developed in at a young age, it's important that we screen them for a septal defect. If a septal defect is found, and it's an, of an appropriate size and shape, it may be possible to close the septal defect using percutaneous or minimally invasive uh, techniques. The holes can be fully characterized using echocardiography, and then by using um, a small uh, clamp-like device, which we place across the defect, we can close the connection between the left and right uh, collecting chambers of the heart and reduce the blood flow between them. By reducing the blood flow, we reduce the pressure effects on the heart and we can reduce the risks of um, heart failure, uh, elevated blood pressure in the lungs and irregular heartbeats and even premature death. A patient who's diagnosed with an atrial septal defect can expect uh, a one night stay in hospital when they are admitted for their procedure and then follow up in the following two to three months to make sure that the procedure has been effective and close the, the defect. If the defect is successfully closed, we do expect the heart to start to return to a normal size and structure, and the prognosis in terms of other problems that they may develop is very good. Patients who have atrial septal defects may develop symptoms. These symptoms may be characterized by palpitations and breathlessness, and there is also a small increased risk of stroke in these patients. So any of these features that present uh, in patients 
are, it is important that we go on to screen them for possible septal defect. Preliminary tests that are important in the screening of patients uh, include an ECG, uh, a heart tracing to look at the heart rhythm, and also an echocardiogram where jelly is placed on the chest and an ultrasound scan of the heart is performed, particularly looking at the chambers at the upper part of the heart to see if there's any connection that we wouldn't expect to normally see between them.